today we're going to be talking about chi-square analysis, okay? Um, I hope this recording goes okay. It's been a long time since I actually recorded something. And then also my son is in the background. He's playing Minecraft, so I hope he's not going to be too loud or too distracting. Um, so anyways, well, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go through a PowerPoint presentation, um, but there is a Google slide uh, version of this, which I'll link in the description box. And then there's also a worksheet that um, my students have. And I also have a Google Doc version of it that I'll link in the description box. Anyhow, let's get started. Let me go ahead and shrink myself down so that you can actually see the presentation. Alrighty. Uh, I did make this um, presentation back in 2021. And back then, um, you know, Among Us was a really popular video game, online game for our students to during remote learning. So that's why I have this Among Us character <laughs> to start with. So chi-square analysis, what is it? You know, it's a, it's a statistical test. It's a way of statistically analyzing whether or not the data that we get in an experiment matches uh, what we expect. So, you know, whenever we do experiments, um, we have an idea. We have an idea of what the outcome is going to be. When we do an experiment, we have hypothesis and um, we do the experiment to verify our hypothesis and we kind of have an idea of what the result is going to be, correct? And so a chi-square analysis is a way of statistically analyzing our data and seeing whether or not the observed data matches what we expect, okay? So is our data what we expect? Is it sus or is it something that we expect, okay? All right, so one way to analyze experimental data is to do a chi-square test, as I said. So it is a statistical test to see if our experimental data, like what we observe, is significantly different than uh, what we expect. Right. So whenever we have, uh, whenever we do a chi-square test, we have to have a null hypothesis. And you guys, just to make it easy for you, the null hypothesis is pretty much the same. Okay, it's pretty much always going to be um, that our observed data is not significantly different than the expected data. That's going to be your null hypothesis, that your observed data is not significantly different than the expected data. Because, you know, when we do experiments, we kind of have an idea of what the outcome is going to be. So our, our null hypothesis is going to state that it's what we observe, what we get, is not going to be that much different than what we expect, okay? So here is a example, and oftentimes chi-square analysis is going to be um, applied to uh, Mendelian genetics, okay? So here's a sample problem. In sweet pea plants, if purple flower color is dominant to white, and you cross two plants that are heterozygous for flower color, you would expect a 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio. And our null hypothesis is going to be, again, it's always the same. There is no significant difference between the observed data with what is expected. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill out this Punnett square. Um, let me choose, let's just go with good old black color pen. So the, the two parents are going to be, the two plants are going to be heterozygous. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Like I said, it's been a while since I actually recorded anything, so I'm a little, uh, <laughs> a little rusty. Okay, so big P, little P, big P, little P. Those are the two plants. And when you fill in the Punnett square, okay, you're gonna end up with 75%. Um, Okay, is going to be purple, right? Oops. And then 25% is going to be white. So this is what we would expect in an experiment. If two of the parents are heterozygous, this is what we would expect, okay? But let's take a look at the next slide. So here is a problem. If you actually observe 69 purple offspring and 31 white offspring, is that close enough to what is expected that you can say that your results are consistent with the theory, that the deviation in your result is likely due to chance? OK, 
okay? So let's say that you actually do this experiment, you're expecting a three to one ratio, you count 69 purple offspring and 31 white, is that close to what you expect, okay? So we can um, calculate the, a chi-square value for this data set to answer the question, okay? And this is our chi-square equation. Okay, this is our chi-square equation. Let me break it down. What does this chi-square equation actually mean? Okay, um, thankfully you don't need to memorize this for the, our, uh, for the AP Biology exam. You do not need to uh, memorize this. It will be given to you. And in fact, on the formula sheet, they will break down the uh, equation for you. But um, for the sake of you know, taking the exam and being able to get through the problems and questions quickly, I highly recommend familiarizing yourself with this equation and doing practice problems. That's why we're doing this, okay? So let's label the parts of this equation. Let's break it down. So uh, this looks like x squared, but this is actually the symbol for chi square. okay? So this is the, that's actually chi square. I apologize, my writing is so, so messy. Okay, and then, you know what? I wonder if I could just type this in. I guess I can't. All right, and then this symbol right here means the sum of, okay? Sum of, meaning addition of, all of this, okay? And actually, I need to move my head out of the way because it's kind of hiding part of the equation. Okay, and O stands for observed, like what we actually see in the experiment. It's the observed data. And then E stands for expected. That's what we expected when we did our experiment. So observed versus expected. So it's gonna be O minus E, observed minus the expected squared, divided by the expected. Okay, so this is expected again. So there's really not too much that you need to know about this, uh, memorize about this equation. It looks very intimidating, but it's really not. Chi-square is basically equal to the sum of observed minus expected, squared divided expected, okay? So let's go back okay, to our practice problem. And it's very helpful to fill out this table um, when it comes to calculating chi-square. Wow, my, okay, <laughs> I think that's okay. So if you actually observe 69 purple offspring and 31 white offspring, is that close enough? Okay, so observed is gonna be 69 purple. Okay, observed is actually gonna be 69 white is 31 but what's our expected remember we had this idea of it's 75 percent um, purple 30 um 25 percent white okay so to figure out the expected numbers you basically have to add up the total number of plants that are part of this experiment so you're gonna see it's a hundred plants okay 100 plants so what's 75 percent of 100 75 so we expected 75 of the 100 plants to be purple and then 25 percent or 25 of the 100 plants to be um to be white okay and then the next part of the uh table here this chart is o minus e so it's going to be 69 minus 75 okay and that's going to be negative six okay and then O minus E over here is 31 minus 25, and that also gives us six, all right? And then the next part of the equation is like that top part of the equation is you have to square it, okay? So negative six squared is 36, and then six squared is 36, okay? And then remember our equation is O minus E squared over E. So it's basically 36, which we got here, divided by the expected, which is 75. Okay. Um, and then when you do the math, and I already did that ahead of time, it's going to be 0 0.48. And then over here we have 36 divided by the expected, which is 25. Expected is 25 white and we get uh, 1.44, okay? And remember, chi-square is the sum. It's the sum of the data, okay? So that means we have to add these two values together, okay? It's the sum of the data. So when you add them together, you get 
nine two. Okay, so chi square is one point nine two. But what does that mean? Okay, what does that mean? So one point nine two. Keep that data in mind. What does that mean? We have to actually refer to the critical value table. Okay, this is our critical value table. Now that we've calculated our chi-square value, we can compare it to the critical value found in the critical value table. In this critical value table, you don't need to memorize either. It will be given to you on the AP exam. Okay, um, and in AP Bio, um, in AP Bio, we're looking at probability of 0 0.05. Okay, what does that mean? That just means that, you know, 5% of the time, your observed data is not gonna match the expected, and that's gonna be due to random chance. 5% of the time. However, 95% of the time, so what this means is that 95% of the time, um, your observed data is going to be very close to the expected data. 95% of the time, your observed data is going to be very, very close. It's not going to be significantly different than the um, expected. Okay, so even though um, on the critical value table they give you this probability, you can ignore it. In AP Bio, we always go with 0 0.05. So we're only looking at this row. This row is the important row. Okay, and another thing that you need to look at with the critical value is table is the degree of freedom okay the degrees of freedom you can see here it's one two three four five the degree of freedom is basically the categories the number of categories okay the number of categories minus one okay and how many categories did we have in the case of our genetics problem there were two categories or there were two phenotypes there was purple and white so it's going to be two minus one which is one Okay, so for us, it's two categories mine. Oops, it's supposed to be. Sorry, let me just cross that, cross that out. It's two minus one, which is one. So our degree of freedom is going to be one. Okay, so I wrote here circle the DF and the probability that we're using, and then draw a box around the critical value. So our critical value is 3.84. That's our critical value for our chi square test in this sample example. Okay, and so what's happening here is that our chi-square value that we calculated, which is 1.92, it has to be less than 3.84, okay, 3.84, in order to accept our null hypothesis, okay? If our chi-square value is greater than 3.84, then we have to... Um, reject we have to reject our null hypothesis and that basically what that means is that our observed data is significantly different than the expected and that means that there's something else going on with our experiment that we have to reject our null hypothesis that there's something else going on in our experiment perhaps that's not straight up mendelian genetics going on with our purple versus white or maybe there was something wrong with our experiment Maybe there was something else involved with our experiment that gave us observed data that is significantly different than our um, expected. But because our chi-square value is less than 3.84, then that means that we are going to fail to reject our null hypothesis, that it is acceptable, okay? In AP Bio, we say that, it's, that we're going to fail to reject our null hypothesis. Basically, we're gonna accept it. Okay, so if our chi-square value is lower than the critical value, okay, remember our chi-square value is 1.92 in our sample, in our example, it's less than our critical value, which is 3.84. So we're gonna fail to reject our null hypothesis. The data we observed fits well with the data we expected, okay? And if the chi-square value is higher, so if it's larger, if it's higher than 3.84, then we're going to reject our null hypothesis. Our observed data does not feel well, fit well with our expected data. Okay. So since our chi-square value is 1.92 and it is less than our critical value, let's circle the right answer. Are we going to fail to reject our null hypothesis? Our data we observe fits well, or will we uh, reject our null hypothesis? 
Well, we're going to fail to reject our null hypothesis. Basically, our observed data, it fits pretty well with what we expected. Remember, um, going back to the problem, it was Mendelian genetics, purple versus white, right? 75% of the offspring should have been purple, 25% should be white, it should be this three to one ratio, and the numbers fit pretty well with what we expected, okay? So our chi-square value of 1.92 is less than the critical value, so we fail to reject our null hypothesis. This means that our observed data for the cross is within a 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio, okay? All right, let's do some sample problems, and this is, uh, the sample problems are found um, on that um, Google Doc, okay? And the first question is in peas, okay? And this is also Mendelian genetics. In peas, yellow seed are dominant over green. In a cross between two plants, both heterozygous for seed color, the following was observed. So if you do this experiment, right, um, this is what we got. This is the data. 4,400 was yellow, 1,624 were green. Type in your null hypothesis. And remember, the null hypothesis is always going to be the same, okay? It's always going to be the same that the observed data is not significantly different. I'll just write it out. Oops, that's supposed to say different. <laughs> than the expected. Okay, and that's our null hypothesis. And we're gonna be calculating our chi-square um, value. And if it is smaller than the critical value, then our null hypothesis, uh, we're gonna accept it, we're gonna fail to reject it. But if our chi-square value is greater than the critical value, then we're gonna have to reject our null hypothesis. And that means that what we observe here, there's something else going on. It is not straight at Mendelian genetics maybe, or um, maybe the way that we conducted this experiment, something went wrong. Maybe there was something wrong that was, or maybe there was something influencing our results other than Mendelian genetics. I hope that makes sense. I hope that um, the whole point of chi-square testing uh, makes sense to you, okay? All right, um, you know, this is, this is a PowerPoint, but it originally came from a Google slide that I made. Um, and then I had students, it was kind of interactive where students can click here to see the critical values table, but that's not part of this PowerPoint, okay? So anyways, let's go ahead and fill in this table, okay? The phenotype is yellow, right? Yellow versus green. And then the observed, okay, is 4,400 that's yellow, and then 1,624 that is green. But what about our expected? What are the numbers for the expected? Okay, remember I said that you have to add up the total number, number of plants that was observed. Okay, so that gives me, carry the one, five, six. So that's gonna be 6,024 total, okay? And so, um, you know, I, I guess I forgot to do the Punnett square. It tells you in the problem that they're heterozygous. So you should see this three to one ratio, yellow to green, or you should see 75% yellow, okay, to 25% green, okay? So then if the total number of plants is 6,024, what's 75% of that? That would be the expected value, okay? And I already did the numbers. Um, the expected 75% of 6,024 is 4,000, 518. That's our expected. Okay. What we saw in the experiment though actually is 4,400. And then the expected for green, 25% of 6,024 is 1,506. Just looking at my numbers, like if I got you know, if I got 4,400 yellow and 1,624 green, I'd be like, yeah, that's pretty close to what's expected. Okay, 
To me, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's pretty close, but we need to do a chi-square test to truly see if what we observe is not far, is not significantly different than the expected, okay? Remember, our null hypothesis is that our observed is not significantly different than the expected. Okay, so let's do O minus E. So O minus E is 4,400 minus 4,518, and that gives me negative 118, okay? And then over here, O minus 1,624 minus the expected 1,506, that gives me 118. Negative 100 and, no, not negative 100, it's 118, okay? And then when I square 118, um, I get this crazy number, 13,924. Okay, and that's the same value here in this box. But let's go ahead and divide that by the expected. So 13,924 divided by the expected, 4,518. Um, then I get 3.08, okay? And then over here, 13,924 divided by the expected, which is 1,506. And I get um, 9.25. Okay, so that's not the end though, right? Because square, sorry, chi-square. Uh, chi-square is equal to the sum of these numbers, right? So I've got to add these two numbers up. 3.08 plus 9.25. And then if I do that using my calculator, I get 12.33. 12.33 is my chi-square. 12.33. Am I going to fail to reject or reject my null hypothesis? Well, I have to compare it to the critical value, right? The critical value table. Um, let me see. There's my critical value table. Okay, so 12.33. So my chi-square is 12.33. All right, remember there are, the, we're only looking at this row, okay? We can ignore these, okay? In AP Bio, we look at the probability of 5%, okay? Our p-value of 0 0.05. And then our degree of freedom, remember, it's the number of categories, and in this case, it was yellow and green, minus one, the category was two minus one, minus one, which is one. So we're looking at this column. So that means our critical value that we're looking at is 3.84. And is our chi-square less than 3.84 or greater than? It's greater than, okay? It's greater than 3.84. You guys, so that means that we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to reject our null hypothesis. We're gonna have to reject our null hypothesis. That means that there is something going on with our experiment that that means, going back to this, that our observed data is, is significantly different from the expected. 4,400 is significantly different from 4,518. 1,624 that were green is significantly different than the 1,506 green that was expected. So we are going to reject null hypothesis, okay? So what does this mean, okay? What does this mean? You probably, you may not be asked, okay, to come to a conclusion or to offer up an alternative hypothesis on the AP exam. So let's go ahead and, you may be asked to do that, so let's go ahead and do that. So that means that, you know, um, perhaps in sweet peas, uh, yellow is not completely dominant over green, or uh, maybe this is not a Mendelian genetic trait, okay? Or maybe there was something going on in the experiment that could have influenced the outcome, okay? So then you can state that maybe per perhaps that there was something in the experiment that, um, influenced, that influenced the observed data, uh, and that's why the observed data was significantly different than the expected, okay? So you have to kind of talk about perhaps why, you may be asked to talk about perhaps why the observed data is significantly different than the expected, okay? And that's why you had to reject the null hypothesis. 
Um, also, um, chi-square analysis can be can be uh, used not only in a Mendelian genetics problem, but also um, animal behavior labs. Okay, so for example, in this problem, AB biology students collected data while studying pill bugs. They created three chambers for the insect to explore. No cover, that was their control, wet paper towel, leaf litter, basically leaf from the outside. And they used 12 pill bugs. Results after 10 minutes. So they ended up with 12, sorry, out of the 12, there were two pill bugs in the control, there were a chamber, there were four in the wet paper towel chamber, and then six in the leaf litter. Was this statistically significant? Did the pill bugs prefer the leaf litter? Or was this result due to pure chance? Apply your chi-square knowledge to confirm. Okay, so yeah, in the chambers, you end up with two, four, six. So it looks like there's more pill bugs in the leaf litter chamber. Does that mean that they prefer um, leaf litter over control or a wet paper towel? Okay, so with um, animal behavior, when you apply chi-square, your null hypothesis is going to state that um, there's no significant difference between the control, the wet, and then the leaf litter. Okay, so there's no significant difference between the control, wet paper towel, or leaf litter. Okay, uh, the observed data is not going to be significantly different than the expected. So with our observe, we see two, four, six, but what we would expect is that there's no preference, okay? There's no, there's no preference. So with these type of, uh, when you try to do chi-square analysis on experiments, you're gonna say that there's really no difference between the control group and the experimental groups. So if there's 12 pill bugs, uh, you would expect four, four, four. There's no significant, so what I'm trying to say is that there's no preference between the control group and the experimental groups, okay? So with our null hypothesis, we're gonna say that there's, there is no significant difference between um, the observed data to the expected data. Because with animal behavior, we're seeing that these animals have no preference, okay? Um, it's gonna be four, four, four. All right, so let's go ahead and um, do the O minus E. So O minus E, that's gonna give us negative two, zero, and two. And then when you square it, that's gonna give you four, O squared, obviously, zero squared is zero, two squared is gonna be four, okay? And my head is in the way, so let me move my head out of the way. Okay, and then O minus E squared over E, so four over E is one, zero over four is zero, and then four over four is one. And so with chi-square, guys, remember it's the sum of, it's the sum of this data. So it's one plus zero plus one, which is two, okay? So two is our chi-square value, okay? So let's take a look at the critical values table. So our chi-square is two, right? Um, but what's our degree of freedom? Oh yeah, so let's cross this out. We're looking at this row. Okay, um, remember our um, number of categories was three. So it's three minus one, which is two. So therefore we're looking at the degree of freedom under the two column. So that means that we're looking at the critical value of 5.99, all right? And if our chi-square value is two, therefore, okay, it's two, therefore it's less than 5.99. Are we gonna fail to reject or reject a null hypothesis? We're going to fail to reject. Basically, that means that what we observed is not significantly different than what we expected, okay? So going back here, what we observed is not far off from what we expected. Then that means that the pill bugs really have no preference in this experiment. 
that they really have no preference for control, wet paper towel, or leaf litter. You know, if I was doing this experiment, I'd be like, oh, there's six of them in the leaf litter. Maybe they do prefer. You know, what could be a better way to run this experiment? How could we truly know that pill bugs have no preference? How could we truly know? Um, we could definitely up the number of pill bugs in the experiment. You know, in the, in the experiment, we only used two, uh, we only used 12, but if we could use like 30 or 60 or 80 or 100 pill bugs, that could really give us a better idea of whether or not pill bugs have a preference for chamber, okay? So 12 pill bugs, to be honest, is probably not enough to really run a uh, proper experiment. But in this case, um, we're going to have to fail to reject our null hypothesis and our conclusion would be is that the pill bugs have no preference, okay? They have no preference for chamber. Um, that would be our conclusion. Or we could say that we really need to um, increase uh, the number of subjects, increase the number of pill bugs in our experiment, okay? All right, uh, this is, uh, number three is also another Mendelian genetics problem. So I feel like we don't really need to go over this. And um, yeah, I think you can do this one on your own because it's like question number one, okay? Okay, um, I feel like we should definitely do this one because this is a dihybrid cross. This is a dihybrid cross, okay? All right, in a flowering plant, white flowers, big B, are dominant over red, little b, and short plants, big E, are dominant over tall, little e. When two double heterozygote, big B, little b, little big E, little e plants were crossed, the resulting phenotypes were observed. Okay, do you guys remember when we do a dihybrid cross with heterozygous individuals, we should end up with a 9-3-3-1 ratio, okay? A 9 homozygous, okay, homozygous dominant traits, okay? Like both should be, I'm sorry, not homozygous, but both should have, sorry, that shouldn't be homozygous. That uh, for both traits, you should see dominant, 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 that's what I meant to say dominant dominant but three should be dominant um, recessive okay dominant recessive okay so recessive dominant and then recessive recessive okay so um, white is going to be dominant short is going to be dominant red is going to be actually um, recessive and short is going to be dominant white is going to be dominant, tall is going to be recessive, and then recessive, recessive, okay? So you should see this 3, 9, 3, 3, 1 ratio, okay? So actually, let me rewrite it over here, okay? So we're going to see dominant, dominant, uh, recessive, dominant, dominant, recessive, and then recessive, recessive. You should see this 9331 ratio, okay? And then your null hypothesis should be that the observed is not significantly different. It's always the same than the expected, okay? So this is what we observe. So let's go ahead and see um, if it is, you know, close to our uh, expected, okay? Okay, so actually it's red short, red short. It's white short, red short, white tall, red tall, okay? So I'm gonna just do white short, red short, white, tall and then red tall okay so what did we observe um actually i wrote it down here so it's going to be 206 83 65 30. okay and how do we get the expected right how do we how do we figure out what was expected remember we have to add up all of the individuals all right, and then multiply 
by the expected ratio, which is the 9331 ratio. Okay, so when we add them all up, that leads us to 384 individuals or organisms. 384. Okay, and so 384 out of the 384, what we expect is 9 out of 6, 9 out of 16 to be um, white and short. Okay, and so um, 9 out of 16, okay, times 384, and then when you, um, you know, put that in your calculator and calculate it, uh, you get 216. Okay, so 216 is what we expect to be white and short, but what we observed was 206. So we're doing a chi-square analysis to see if what we observed is significantly different is or similar or close to the expected. Okay, so I'm just trying to like remind you guys why we're doing this. And then the 9 to 3, 3, 1 ratio, um, 3 out of 16 should be red and short. So 3 out of 16 times 384, okay, and that gives you 72. So we expect 72 to be red and short, but what we actually observed was 83, okay? And then also it's same down here, 316 times 384, that gives you 72. And then one out of 16 times 384, that gives you 24. So we expect 24, okay? All right, so observed is 206 minus 216, that gives you minus 10. And then um, 83 minus 72, that gives you 11. And then over here, 65 minus 72, that gives you minus seven. And then 30 minus 24, that gives you six, okay? So then um, all you have to do is just square it here. That gives you 100. 11 squared is 121. 7 square is 49, 6 square is 36, okay? And then you take these values and you just divide it by the expected, 216. And that gives me 0 0.46, 121 divided by the expected 72. That's uh, 1.68. And then here is uh, 49 divided by 72. That gives me 0 0.68, 0 0.68. And then, sorry, I feel like this part of the video is gonna be pretty boring. 36 divided by the expected 24 is 1.5, okay? And then chi-square, right? It's the sum of, right? Isn't it the sum of all of these values? So when you add 0 0.46, 1 0.68, 0 0.68, 1 1.5, you should get 4.32, 4.32, okay? All right, so let's take a look at our critical value table. Again, probability, we're always looking at 0 0.05 or 5%. Um, this row, our degree of freedom, how many phenotypes or categories do we have? We have four, so the degree of freedom is gonna be three. So therefore, we're looking at this number, our critical value is 7.82, all right? And 4.32 is less than 7.82, therefore, we're gonna fail to reject. We're gonna fail to reject. That means our null hypothesis is acceptable. Okay, it's acceptable that the observed data, 206, 83, 65, 30, is not far off from the expected data. Okay, our observed data is not far off from our expected data. That um, we're good, our hypothesis is good. Okay, so our conclusion um, is that, you know, what we observed is not far from the expected, that the white is dominant over, um, the red and then the short is dominant to the tall. So if you cross two heterozygotes, you should get this 9331 ratio. Okay, and a dihybrid cross. 
All right, and then there's also sex linkage that you can do this um, chi-square analysis with. We're not gonna do that, but uh, maybe what I can help you with is I can set up the Punnett square, right? I could set up the Punnett square for you and then you can do the, um, the rest on your own. So female who's a carrier of colorblind allele mates with a male who is colorblind. So remember, uh, colorblindness is a sex linked trait. So like X big N is gonna be normal color vision and then X little N is gonna be colorblind vision. Okay, and in our example here, the female is a carrier, so she's going to be X big N, X little N, she's heterozygous, she's a carrier. And then the other bombette, okay, is um, colorblind, so it's, he's gonna be X little N, Y. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you fill in this Punnett square, you should get X little N, X little N, X big N, Y, X little N, Y. Okay, so that means is that you should have 25%, okay, 25% females, all right, uh, you should have 25% normal, I was going to say female normal, but it's supposed to be normal females, okay, and you should have 25% colorblind females. Okay, and then you should have 25% normal males, and then 25% colorblind males, okay? And so you're gonna compare that to the observed. This is the observed data. And then this is the expected. 25% of the total number of bomb bats should be normal females. The 25% of the total number of bomb bats should be colorblind females, okay? So the next step, you have to add up the total number of bomb bats, take 25% of each, okay? Um, and then you're gonna fill in this table. Okay, so I hope you know how to do that one. That was number six on that worksheet, okay? And again, I did link the uh, Google worksheet down in the information box. Okay, and then there's this one um, with cats. Okay, and cats fur color is determined by the co-dominant sex link traits, black versus orange, etc. Okay, so let me maybe set up the Punnett square for you, a calico female. So she is X B X O, um, is bred with a black male, X B Y. Okay, so this is what they would expect. They would expect females that are black and then females that are calico, black males, XBY, and orange males. So this is expected 25%, 25, so 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, okay? That's what we would expect, and this is the observed, okay? So you would have to add up the total number of cats or kittens Multiply by 25%, 25%, 25%, 25% to give you the expected, okay? But then also don't forget the, what would be the degree of freedom, right? What would be the DF? The degree of freedom in this case is going to be 4 minus 1, which is 3. So when you look at the, um, sorry, when you look at the critical value table, okay, it's going to be 7.82, all right? So I think that's um, where I'm going to end this video because I think that you guys can do the worksheets on your own, the worksheet on your own, okay? I do have also in the, um, the Google slide uh, an FRQ from way back when in 2003, okay? And you can take a look at that. Uh, and the Google uh, slide is interactive, so you can like click on um, the button to get you um, the answers. Okay, like I do have the answers there. Okay, all right, so I hope that this video was helpful. I know it was really long, but I hope that it was helpful and that you're able to understand, like what is the whole point of chi-square tests, right? A chi-square test is to see if your observed data is close to what you expect in an experiment, 
okay? And it can be applied to genetics, Mendelian genetics, non-Mendelian genetics, like sex link traits, um, dihybrid crosses, and then it could also be um, used when you do experiments, like animal behavior, okay? Um, all right, so anyways, I'm gonna end the video here, and I'll see you next time, maybe. Okay, bye.